right, all right, fine. I'll be a gracious host. How you doing? Little Mermaid is the scariest Disney movie by far, though. Why the hell is Ace Blade in your Kickstarter? <laughs> And comics we going I'm getting controversial today we're gonna get controversial today with with my my proudest moment is this interview and being able to talk to you too <sighs> ladies and gentlemen boys and girls children of all ages Taurus comics in collaboration with fourth wall productions respectfully brings to you the 99th episode of the Four Tales podcast. I'm your host, Kyron Silva from Taurus Comics. Across the way is a violet tutelar of Ace Blade, Danny J. Quick. And together, we are your two award-winning Blurred Comic Creators here to help you find your next favorite comic. We are live on the Age of Geekdom... Ugh. We are live on the Age of Geekdom Network via Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube, and also TikTok. So if you're listening or watching us live, thank you for your support. But don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and review this podcast because all your positive reviews and interactions help us reach a bigger audience. You messed me up. I did. <laughs> you know, just saw my face. It was. That look of your face of, what did he just say? <laughs> oh, yeah, that one too. What do I be doing, Ace Blade? I be doing, I be doing the Ace Blade? Tutelar. It's a, it was an old-timey way of saying writer. Oh, okay. Yeah, it makes it. Okay. Um. Uh, Good morning, Fishley. How you doing? This is in the building. Um, Spam bops are in the building, too, also. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Early. Early. Instantly. That means that we're, we're being consistent. They okay. only show up on they only show up on your, your feed if you're consistently posting at the same time. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. See, I'm not a social media guru like you are, so I didn't know all these things. No, I, I had to do some research. Uh, oh. I know, man. How, how's it going, man? This is... Uh, this is episode ninety nine. We should. I feel like we should do one more just to make it an even one hundred for the year. No. 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 Okay. No. <laughs> okay. no, because see, I figured that'd be a great way to start. Yeah, season start, four. Your, start season four with the episode four hundred. Yeah, I like it. I like it. You're right. You're right. You're right. Javon says the uh, your nominations for comic book creator of the year are Dylan, 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 Dylan. He spits hot fire. <laughs> he spits hot fire. <laughs> Javon, 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 Javon. <laughs> <laughs> you space the hot fire. Oh, I man. rip and I rhyme. I write and I rip. Uh, how Maybe next year, Javon. You got, you got to produce something this year for it to. Yeah, you know. my goal. My goal for this entire year is to to be at least nominated for one of these Beam Awards next year. Because. Uh, <laughs> We got a lot and we got a lot of votes. We got a lot of submissions. We um, had 300 people vote. Yeah, we had That's crazy people. to me cuz we don't even get 300 listeners. <laughs> <laughs> so so shout out to y'all for uh what's up Orlando? Uh shout out to y'all for um you know for, for submitting and sharing and um you know, it's been it's been dope, man. This is a idea that Kyra and I had almost simultane- simultaneously. And, um, you know, we, we decided to put it together and uh, get it done. So, you know, today we are going to be revealing the winners of the Beam Awards, but not quite yet. I feel like Kyron, Kyron has other stuff he wants to talk about first. Are you going to watch the Millie Vanilli biopic? Absolutely, I'm going to watch yes! it. I'm so excited. I'm so excited about the Millie Vanilli documentary. <laughs> I absolutely don't watch that. It looks so good for no reason. Like, why do I? Why am I so intrigued? Why? I wasn't even like I wasn't even watching like into music when, when that was a thing. But I, I just want to know. Millie Vanilli is like has been like in pop culture for so long. And I don't know, like one of their songs, probably. I'd probably, I know well, you know one. you you know one of them. Yeah, There's I know girl, the one. you know it's true. Yeah, I know the yeah. one, but that's that's it. So, I, yeah, I remember I my earliest memory of Millie Billy is when they were on the Super Mario Brothers cartoon. They did like a guest wow. appearance on there, and I was wow. all like, I was like, oh my god, who the hell is these two black dudes on Super Mario Brothers? And then I started hearing them on the radio. I was like, oh yeah, that's the dudes from Super Mario. <laughs> Blame it on the rain, yep. 
Yeah. Leave it on a rain. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Really just skip. Okay. Yeah. Um other than that, how was your Thanksgiving? Everything go good? I have Thanksgiving number three tonight. So number it's three? not over yet. Yeah. Wait, today is Saturday. You still celebrating Thanksgiving? <laughs> yes. <laughs> How does this happen? How does this happen? What is all right? So, Thanksgiving number one was last week Sunday, the twelfth. Okay. Yeah. okay. Um, we had to do that early because my nephew was sending uh, no, no, to the army. Yep. Uh, Thanksgiving number two was on actual Thursday with one of my sisters in laws. Okay. Uh, she wanted to have general Thanksgiving, um, but then last week, you know this. Last week, my mother in law was in the hospital for like five days she had um, some very bad medical issues and she out of it um so everybody wanted to postpone what they were going to cook because they're worried about my mother-in-law so Mm -hmm. what we did is we are going to have the everybody big thanksgiving today okay that makes sense that makes sense okay if you want to count last night though when they had me cooking 50 things of fried chicken outside in 40 degree weather (laughs) I saw that. I saw the post that you made standing out there by the by the uh fryer with the with the chicken out. I was like, okay, uh hey, you gotta do it. Sometimes you gotta cook chicken for the family. Hey, I made my ancestors proud though. I cooked that. Hey, everybody loves chicken, man, especially fried chicken. Everybody yeah. does. So yeah. don't don't take it as racism. No, it's racism. Because they, they specifically said there was like five people there, all adults, and they know how to cook, and they said Kyron, you know how to make fried chicken, right? I said, I'm but you sorry, do. What? But you do though. I do. I do. I do. <laughs> but I do. you do. I do. Hey, I do. That's how it goes, man. That's how it goes. But it's okay. But it's okay as long as they keep finding a use for you. <clears throat> it I, I can't do anything else. I'm not good building things. I'm not good fixing things. So I can cook though, which is why I'm fat. I'm and good. You can with draw. That. You can cook and you can draw. Uh, yeah, but that's not useful for them. <laughs> Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sidebar, uh, sidebar. Victor Dandridge is in San Francisco this weekend. Oh, really? I might go down there tomorrow to go see him just to say hi. It's a, it's an hour and a half away, but oh, I was only an hour and a half. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Take that drive. Take that mm-hmm. drive. That's not bad for for anything in California. Is this nice? An hour and a half is great. That's like a <laughs> like a bike ride. <laughs> If you, it takes an hour and a half just to drive through L.A., dude. <laughs> Bro, that's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, um, PM Comics on TikTok. Hope my mother-in-law is okay. She is doing better. She's not 100%. Um, she's recovering. She's at home now, which is great. Uh, but uh, we're still worried about her long-term things. So. Mm-hmm. Um, officially, hi. I know how to give everyone salmonella. Does that count? No, not no. <laughs> no. We're going no on that one. <laughs> that's, uh, that's the that's the opposite of the goal for Thanksgiving. Like that's what you're not supposed to be doing. Well, I mean, so. it's, it depends. Is, is that was that your goal to give everybody salmonella? I mean, okay. were you just trying to kill everybody? Uh, rule number one: Don't eat at Fish Lee's house. <laughs> <laughs> don't eat at Fish Lee's house for Thanksgiving because that's hey, that's salmonella. It's nothing, nothing to play about, brother. All right. How was your Thanksgiving though? Oh man, we had a uh, we actually had a really good um, Thanksgiving. My my father actually just had hip surgery on mm. earlier this week, and um, so he couldn't go anywhere. But you know, we all brought some food over to his house. You know, we my wife cooked on we, cooked all day Wednesday, and um, you know, we took over plates over to his house, over to their house, so they could eat and celebrate. But then we just came back to the house, ate all day, just the six of us. Um, called and talked to people and watched movies and played spades all day. Like it was really, really good, man. It was really, really good Thanksgiving. And um, do you know how to play spades? I don't lie. Do you actually know how to play spades? I'm solid. I'm solid in spades. Okay. Man. Like, right. yeah, yesterday was actually the first day that I've lost in my house. Like my me and my partner lost. I I we always switched partners because we just taught our oldest two daughters how to play spades. So sometimes I'll play with Kendra, sometimes I'll play with Stephanie, sometimes I'll play with Tiana as my partner. And last yesterday was the first time that I lost um in a in a series. So we play like the best of three to five hundred. Okay. 
And yesterday was the first time that I lost two out of three. So I'm pretty, I'm okay. I'm all right in space for sure. All right. All right. Uh, Michael Watson says he, he ate and played Epic 21 and Wavelength. Mm-hmm. I have no idea what Wavelength is. I don't know what Wavelength is either, but I know Epic 21. That's I good. know Epic 21. Well, and not to throw shades, but I'm waiting for my cards, Mike Watson. Um, you know. <clears throat> I know we have some coming also. So yeah. if you out there playing Epic 21, we I'm, we, I, we we want to be invited to this. We're trying to, we're trying yeah. to play Epic 21 too. I mean, I I've seen you play virtually. You want to invite a brother? I can throw it down somehow. Like learn at least. You know what I'm saying? I ain't never played. Oh, he says shipped. Wait, what? Hey, there we go. Hey, right. so uh, early Christmas. All right, all right, there cool. We there we go. All right, man. <clears throat> you Got ready? My cards and green zone. Okay, okay. Uh, playing cages. It, it is. You need to be able to play spades. I'm, I'm just saying. Yes. Um. We and like I like I said, we actually taught our daughter, our oldest daughters, how to play. Now, Kendra is better. I think Kendra is better than Stephanie right now, but only because Stephanie does not pay attention to the cards that are being played. She's wow. always she's always whatever is going on around her. She's always more absorbed into that than the game. Well, at least she was yesterday. <laughs> with you. you know, I'm not gonna throw my daughter on the bus, but that's why we don't. Nope. You throwing your daughter under the bus. That's, what <laughs> that's why we lost, is because Stephanie was not paying attention. Um, they're not, they don't they don't renege, but they uh, you know, you got to pay attention when playing spades. Are you good at spades? Are you? Are you I'm good. good. I'm good. Okay. All right. I'm so, I'm I'm more than solid. Spades <laughs> oh, and dominoes. You, you can count me in. I'm getting I'm getting better at dominoes. I'm not I'm not great at dominoes, but I'm I just learned it last year. So I I only I only learned how to play dominoes last year. And um, I'm getting there. I enjoy playing it, but I'm not. I'm wait, not wait, not. you just learned last year how to play dominoes? Yeah. Um, they played. Uh, they used to play all the time when I was in the military, and I just couldn't. I couldn't get the game. I mean, like I knew the rules of the game, but I never played. Like I would never sit down and play. Like I could. I knew what to do, but okay. you know, knowing what to do and playing in a game is different. Whoa, uh, whoa, wait, whoa, wow. whoa, Lonzo! Wow. What? <laughs> what? Wow. What? <laughs> we gonna, hey, somebody got to teach our guys. Lonzo, you might need to hop on and talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to do a special what? episode. We're going to do a special episode to teach you how to play spades. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm shook right now. <laughs> right, that's that's crazy. That's that's the last one I would have thought. Right? Uh, <laughs> Lonzo not Star the, not knowing how to play spades. Not, the, not, the not stereotype you. Not a stereotype you. <laughs> But uh, I would be the last one that I thought would wouldn't know how to play spades. That's crazy. I was making money. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. All, right. All right. Whatever, man. <laughs> whatever. Whatever excuse you got. So <laughs> no, that's the. I, I play basketball too, but I still know how to play. Spades. You know. <laughs> hey, but this hey, might be the most stereotypical show we've done. We talked about fried chicken, spades, wow. dominoes. Do you want to talk about watermelon and collard greens after this? I don't know. Um, collard greens. I listen. You Wait, gotta. You, you about to say something stupid, aren't you? I don't. I'm not gonna get into it. I just. I. It's not my favorite uh, vegetable. I'll just say that. Okay. I mean, it don't have to be favorite, but uh, it's not even top five vegetables, though. <laughs> like, I, I'm taking. I'm taking way more sides before collard greens. <laughs> cabbage. Cabbage is gonna be in the top five. Mac and cheese is gonna be in the top five. Um. Well, okay. Well, we'll save your top five. We'll, we'll, yeah, we, we got we have other things we got to talk about, but um, we do, we do, we do. oh, um, Michael says you need Felcher Survey to get your Epic Twenty One because you mm-hmm. haven't done that yet. I haven't. No. Is it is it on Backer Kit or is it on? Uh, I'm assuming Backer Kit. Um, Mally Simpson, what's up? Um, it is done today. Did you get your lumberjack book, Mally? That's. All. I hope we did. I hope we did. I didn't see an order come through on my side, but maybe it came through on your side. So, uh, either way. We'll get it to him. We'll get it to him. Um, but All right. we know what the people are here for. Yeah, I mean, we know what everybody's here for. So you uh, want to find out who won, who lost, who your favorite indie creator is? I'm still a little shook over the whole Lonzo thing, honestly. But um, <clears throat> yeah, that, that's surprising. But hey, you learn something new every day. So we never really discussed how we're going to reveal this. If we want to talk about the nominees first, if we want to. Go over things like how do we want to do this? Well, let's talk about the categories and then you okay. know just do it, do it like that. So, all right. 
You want to start from the top? Start from the yeah. top of the list? Yeah, let's go. All right. So we're going to start with the favorite comic category. Um, my what are what are some of your favorite comics from the year, Kyron? I had a, I had a few comics this year that I really enjoyed. Um, Starcore uh, was one of them, and I didn't read. I don't want to say I read more indie comics this year than than anything else. Paperback Hero Saga came out this year by uh, Mason Parker. Um, mm. I also released a couple of comic books this year. We did our first um, Western comic book. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Kyron actually drew has, that. Has that actually been released? Released? Um, technically, well, we're sending out the the Kickstarter backer rewards uh, now. So, um, the first one will be out within the next okay. few. Weeks. All right. Okay. Well, yeah. All right, we're we're going. Going. Uh, ooh, um, <clears throat> um, don't get your ears mixed up. <laughs> Like, okay, so the, like, the ones yeah. I know I remember um, that I enjoyed, uh, Ka, the Crow Magnet by Fishley there. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, There's actually a Christy Kringle from Marat Michaels recently came out. It's a cool little take of a, of a, a Christmas story where Santa Claus's daughter has to avenge him, basically. So oh. I thought it was a cool thing. Sure, but it was nice. Um, it's none of the wear spider. Was dope as usual. Always. Always. Um, and uh, see, people are going to say I'm biased on this one, but I drive for server. Even though I was an artist on it, that was actually a really good book. Um, yeah. You know, I, totally. I. I'm trying to think of what else. I, uh, Green Zone was fun. I Green. remember reading that, enjoying that. Five Star was good. Um. There was a lot of good ones, actually. A lot of great indie comics, but yeah. the reason that we wanted to make this a category is because you know, <laughs> I, I, I'm down with it. I'm down with that. Um, <laughs> the reason that we decided to make this a category was because we want to, you know, there's a lot of indie comics, like indie indie comics, that you know don't get a don't get a lot of shine. You know, don't yeah. get a lot of shine, and um, we decided to you know just put it out there to see what people's favorite indie comic was so the way that we did it you know we just Mm -hmm. did a simple survey online on our website and people could submit their their votes and then we took the top three as nominees and then the first one the one that got the most votes is the winner so are you ready we took the top four but we took the top four and then the um you know the first one the one with the most votes is the winner so are you ready kyron sure favorite indie comic Indie Comic A Colite The Band of the Black Fist Worthy Chaos Redemption And the winner is Worthy Chaos Redemption Congratulations. Congratulations. Redemption. In a world where forbidden love defies even death, Serafina and Draven's fateful encounter as teenagers sparks an unbreakable bond. A demonic possession leads to a gruesome family tragedy. Their love story takes a dark and perilous turn, setting them on a path where love, survival, and supernatural forces collide. Um, Worthy Chaos Redemption. I want to say this is uh seven issues that all came out this year. If I'm, oh. if I'm mistaken, all seven issues came out this year. That is crazy that all seven came out this year. That is absolutely insane. And um, you know, I think they have the 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 trade paperback is actually on um or the hardcover is actually on um Kickstarter right now. So um definitely check that out and um, congratulations to the to the whole team, the Worthy Chaos uh, Redemptions team. Now we didn't talk about this, um, Michael. What the hell? We didn't talk about what what are people going to get as winners of this? Oh like, yeah, so, so our guests are all going to get this year. We're going to be sending out certificates. We're going to contact you um, early in the new year, and um, we're going to send out certificates to you. 
um, for this year. Next year, we, we we got some ideas for what we can do next year. If we might, maybe we'll get some sponsors besides Taurus Comics and Fourth Wall uh, Productions, who are the sponsors of this year's Beam Awards. <laughs> if you want to sponsor next year's Beam Award, please email us at fourtailspodcast at gmail.com. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So this year, we're going to do certificates that we send out some nice certificates. Uh, like I said, we want to uh, highlight these indie creators and the amazing work that you have all been doing. So, and I'll be I'll be honest. I have not read Worthy Chaos's Redemption. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, I've read Acolyte. I heard of Band of the Black Fist. I I know they are all amazing, but this one for me came out of nowhere. Um, and I'll be I'll be honest. There's gonna be a couple winners here I didn't hear about, but going back and looking at them, researching them, I could see why people like them. Absolutely. I think I think one of the great things about indie comics is that you know they're all over the place. Like we got some nominees from from Australia. We got some from, you know, different places in the world and, and indie comics are all over the place. So I'm happy that, um, that people, um, enjoy this. Like I said, we got over 300, um, votes. So, yep. Hey, I'm down with it. So what's next up? Uh, next up we have indie writer. Is that right? No. Indie artist, favorite indie artist. Now, this is going to be my favorite category because as artists, you know, it this is my forte. But we had a stacked field this year. Yeah. I mean, we really did. There, the the amount of indie creators out there that are just killing it on the art scene is just fabulous, and I'm excited for it. Um, I was a little disappointed I didn't get any nomination again, but you know, no, it it but look, but looking at the top three. I, Y'all, y'all picked some good winners here. Yeah. So uh, what we're going to do is, and we should have said this before the first one, the, oh. the video is going to show the nominees first and then reveal the winner at the end. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so, you, okay. You know we do not plan any of these things, right? We, this is, Everything we do on this show is just off the cuff. Hey, just... we're going to get it. We get it right. <laughs> and it takes like a couple of years to really figure things out. So. Yeah, we'll, we'll get it. We'll get it. So the nominees will show first, the, the three nominees, and then the winner will show at the end. So um, favorite indie artist. Let's go. 23 favorite indie artist. Fish Lee. The Mighty K-A-A-W, The Cro-Magnon, The Sentinels, Jonas Da Costa, Worthy Chaos Redemption. Sean Hill, Isanon of the Worst Spider, Drums of Ogun. And the winner is... Sean Hill, Isanon of the Worst Spider, Drums of Ogun. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out! To Sean, Damian Hill, um, and I think that was the right choice. That I if believe, you actually I, look at that that comic, that was a fire comic. Man, Sean, Sean has been doing some amazing work. Also, you know, uh, Fishley has just been amazing this year. The yeah. fastest pen in in comic books, um, and you know, I think, like you said, we had a stack deck this year. So, um, Sean Hill definitely he actually did a, a variant cover for Ace Blade this year. Um, the the Ace Blade number seven variant. <laughs> Which I was disappointed that that is not going to be an option for favorite cover. Which that you know we'll get to that in a, a little yeah. bit. But next year, I'll, I'm going to just put out there that's my vote for favorite cover. I don't my, think anything could beat that cover. Next year, man. Next year, we'll definitely get it submitted, man. But it's you know Nate, Sean Hill has done amazing work. He is an illustrator of comics, graphic novels, who also dabbles in the realm of concept art, character design, and graphic design. Living and working in Washington, Washington D.C. area with a background in fine art, his education includes the Duke Ellington School of the Arts, Maryland College of the Arts and Design, and the Guy Niami Institute of Art, and a longtime mentor and pupil relationship with Kofi Tyus. You can definitely check out his work at SeanDamianHill.com. Um, Make sure you tag him in Facebook so he knows we're talking about him also, y'all. Absolutely. Yo. absolutely. Make sure. Um, and I also want to say that... Along with Sean Fishley, the fastest pen in indie comics. If you look at everything Fish did this year, I, I'm not surprised that he was nominated and made the top three. Um, yeah. These yeah. these these gentlemen killed it. And going back to when we say we we it takes a while for us to get these done properly. Next year, I'm gonna reach out to y'all so I can get good pictures instead of just stalking you guys as your Facebook and stealing your profile pictures off Facebook and. 
I'm going to get some good pictures for y'all. I promise next year. Okay. The pictures are fine. The pictures are great. They're um, cool. <laughs> we definitely, uh, we definitely uh, appreciate everybody who's joining and sharing and, uh, yeah. and, and um, tagging the artists and creators. Um, we didn't want to kind of lead, lead the bunch and, and get people like contact people and tell them that they won or tell them, you know, we didn't, we just didn't want to be like, you know, send, send an, you know, it didn't feel yeah. right to, to do it, it like that. It didn't. So, um, you know, th these these folks uh, might not even know that they are being um, honored here today, but we are uh, we're, we're happy to do it. So next up, favorite writer, the favorite, favorite writer. writer category. Now, is there a writer that you wanted to win this? Um, yeah, me. I wanted to win it. But right. <laughs> but, you know, uh, we did this fair and square. We did this fair and square, you know, and, uh, you know, we we took uh, <laughs> we took the, the vote seriously. And uh, it was only it was really just me and Kyron, really mostly Kyron, um, who who did the work of of sorting out. Kyron is a wizard with these spreadsheets. So I'll tell y'all one thing: Kyron is gonna make a spreadsheet. <laughs> Kyron <laughs> is gonna make a spreadsheet when it when it gets down to it. And I'm with it because I love spreadsheets too. I love like uh, spreadsheets are awesome. Just yeah, they're, they're awesome. awesome. So useful. So useful. Um. So you know, we we just put them all together and um. You know, we got some we got some good nominees here too. We got some mm -hmm. some great ones, mm -hmm. and um, and indie writers are, you know, in, writing in indie comics is tough because you know most times I'll say the writer is not getting paid. The writer is probably the creator of the project, mm -hmm. and um, you know, a lot of a lot of writers have full time jobs. I know I do I have a full time job, and uh, I have a couple of full time jobs it seems right now, but <laughs> but. Still showing the dedication, the dedication to sit down and write these books, and then you know, for love. I mean, y'all writers just really do write this as a love of comics. Yeah, legit, legit. And um, you know, to see it through all the way to the end, and you not not really knowing or having control over like a production schedule or anything like that. But a lot of times, you know, writers are also the editors. So I think next year we're going to have an editors um, favorite Ooh. indie editors category too. Um, but for now, favorite writers, you ready, Kyron? Yep. Indie writer Charlie McKelvey, Spider Squirrel Trash Panda, Chuck Cox, The Band of the Black Fist, Carissa Grant, Redemption. And the winner is Carissa Grant, Redemption. Congratulations to Carissa. Um, Carissa, and we talked about uh, this book earlier this year, mm -hmm. but being able to put out seven comic books in one year, um, you know, is no is no small feat. It is not a small feat. Um, and you know, congrats to Carissa. She's an indie horror comic writer, and like I said, she's only been making comic books for almost two years now. And to to have seven issues, you know, drop this year, um, is not. I mean, a you're story. you're on issue seven of Ace Blade, and it's taking you what six years? Yeah, exactly. So yeah. you know that takes some that takes some real dedication. So um, shout out to her, and um, congratulations on the favorite indie writer Beam Award. I love it. All right, next up. I want to say this is my favorite. I want to say next up is my favorite one, even though I'm a really? writer. But the colorist, favorite colorist award. Um, colorist, man, I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm yeah. telling you. Colorist. Unsung heroes is a good way to put it. Unsung heroes of the indie world, um, man, because, you know, we know y'all are, are putting a lot of work, putting a lot of dedication into these titles. And a lot of times dealing with us who – you know, don't necessarily know what we want all the time. You know, we're having having to ask you for changes and stuff like that. Um, so shout out to um, all of the colorists in the in the indie world and just comics in general. Y'all are amazing, and um, you know we're happy to celebrate you. Yeah, I, I'm a little disappointed. My favorite colorist, uh, Danny Quake, is not on here. Um, I didn't have any published work. I didn't have. Well, I did have. I did have the. I did do the cover of Ballad of Black Rose. I did color that. But Technically, that hasn't published yet. Hasn't so, published yet. so yeah, you know, so. you know, maybe next year I'll get on there. Next year, I, all right. I, doubt it. I highly doubt it. 
All right, well, let's see who the colors were. And there was actually, a, as you mentioned, this is we had a lot of international nominees here. This is actually the one field that we have probably had the most international nominees for. So this is our worldwide field here. So let's see who we got. Indie colorist. Federico Papito Sayoc. Niobe Comix, American Bliss. Matt Chambers, Redemption. Veronica Smith, Zero Event. And the winner is... Veronica M. F. N. Smith. Wait, what? <laughs> from, from Freestyle Comics. Um, Veronica has colored... So the, the books that I know that came out this year from Veronica are Zero Event, like we mentioned. Yep. She colored Ace Blade number six. She colored Lumberjacks number three. Emerald Quest, Ballad of the Black Rose, Hot Shot and Friends, Ipswich Three, The Last Guardian, and I'm sure I missed some. She just yeah. she just is killing the game as far as you know color go. And I think and I want to say she actually wrote and drew uh, that Hot Shot and Friends title also. So um, Veronica is killing killing the game, and we are happy to celebrate her as uh, 2023's favorite indie colorist. Yeah, and I'll, I'll just be honest. The what she did for Ballad of the Black Road, I, I know you guys haven't seen it yet, but she really did elevate my pencils to another level. I mean, yeah. and that's what the colors is supposed to do. It's supposed to make the image be enhanced, and she did a great job on that. So, oh, we gonna pull this out? I'm, hey, I, I'm, I'm gonna pull it out. You know, I like to pull it out on this. Show. I mean, pull, pull, whoa, pause. Uh, pause. Pull, pull it out on the show. <laughs> Amazing! I don't want to spoil the spoil it for you too much, but you know there's some just beautiful work. Amazing, beautiful work by uh, Kyron and Veronica did amazing job on, uh, on the Battle of the Black Rose there, and uh, I can't wait for y'all to see it. So shout out to Veronica! Thank yep. you, thank you, thank you. Um, I saw something else we forgot this year: inkers. Right. Inkers are people too. We did not do it. And I know yeah. a lot. There aren't really a lot of inkers indie wise because most of us do our own inks, but there are some out there, some good ones. Yeah, we gotta get um, we gotta get inkers and editors on there for next year for sure. All right. Um, um you want to answer that question? Yes. Um, it is shipping very soon. So actually, Morgan, I actually just sent Ballad. Of, so Black Rose and Harlem are shipping at the same time. I just gave Morgan a hundred copies of the Ballad of the Black Rose and Harlem. So um, if you Pledge to that campaign, you should be getting um, shipping updates very, very soon. So literally this last week, send them out to uh, to Morgan, who is going to be shipping those those books out and getting the surveys um, all accounted for, and they'll be coming out soon. So thank y'all. All right, next one, and we only have a couple more <laughs> categories to go. Yep. Or, uh, but next one I think is is very underrated. Also, is letterers. Get yourselves a good letterers like these people we have nominated. Um, I'm telling you, I'm telling they will enhance your book so much by having good letter. And I think we got a good solid field of letterers this year that became our final three. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I'm, I'm just gonna put out there one of the letters is my favorite letter to use, and I think she's fabulous. Uh, I think everybody should use her more often. Mm -hmm. Um, but how do you guys judge these letterers though? You can tell I, a bad letter, but how can you tell the great letter? You can definitely tell a bad letter, but I think um, good lettering is in style, um, the style of the comic. Like if, you know, there's there's a standard, there's almost a standard set for comic book lettering. You know, you can use, yeah. you know, you know, certain, certain fonts, certain typefaces. You can use certain line weights and things like that. But if a letterer really... Um, dives into the style of the comic book, say a Western or sci-fi, you know, there are certain things that you can do to um, accentuate the, um, the story and the, and the dialogue in the comic. And, and for you not to, there's a fine balance between, you know, kind of overshadowing the story and being like too, too dull. So you can definitely tell a good letterer by a few of those things. So 
Definitely. You can tell that Danny likes to letter his books. He's a good I love, I, Listen, I do. I love lettering. It's, it's the one thing that, I, you know, I've spent the most time doing is lettering. Graphic. I'm a graphic designer by trade. So, um, you know, it's it's my favorite. It's my favorite part of the, the comic book creation process. Um, so, right. so next but, year we should expect you to be on this list. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Um, hopefully, you know, we'll see. But I actually I've, I've slowed down. I actually stopped lettering. Um, our book. So, um, you know, I handed the reins off to a couple of other people, but of course I'll be, I'll still be working on some projects. I actually lettered um, Hot Shot in France. So, um, okay. you know, we'll see. We'll All see. right. All right. We'll see. Well, let, let's see what, who you guys chose for favorite letter in indie comics. Let's do it. Indie letterer. Danny Cooper, five star zero event. SK. Mary Machine Gun Myth of Namzu. Nikki Powers, Starcore. And the winner is. SK. Now, nah, this is some bullshit. It's some bull. <laughs> Nikki should have won that award. <laughs> Nikki should have won that. <laughs> we gonna let you finish, but Danny Cooper, the best books of all time. No, no. <laughs> no. Nikki should have won that. Star Core is amazing. <laughs> Get that towards comics.com today, just to let you know. <laughs> Shout out to, to SK Stephen Cook, uh, who is a Sydney based um, letterer. So, uh, Ringo Award nominee and letterer for any products like uh, projects like Yuki and Terra Limpa, Stephen Cook is an award winning. Sydney-based Australian graphic novel creator. His stories range from a retelling of Romeo and Juliet with cats to a steampunk fantasy adventure to a sci-fi epic. Over 500 public public libraries from all across the world, including Australia, Canada, New Zealand, Singapore, and the UK, carry his titles. One of, one of his creations, Wordsmith, is a part of NSW's premier reading challenge list. He's won various accolades, including Cause a Stir, Match Lab, and very recently, the Australian Comic Kickstarter Award for the second most backed project in 2021, which is amazing. So shout out to Stephen Cock, and we do appreciate your, your talents as an indie creator, as an yeah, indie yeah. writer, and, um, you know. Nikki was robbed, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> he was robbed. But you see the fairness, though, because if we if it was up to me and Kyron to choose, there yeah. would definitely be some favoritism. Yeah. But I mean, you know, these are all your guys' votes. Uh, we had we did not change anything, um, even though I wanted Nikki to win because she very, killed it on Starcore. Very minimal input. We didn't, you know, besides pu besides putting it out there that the Beam yeah. Awards were. Um, were, were a thing. We did not try to kind of skew the votes in any way. We did the best that we could not to, you know, show favoritism. So, um, and and I think I think it it came out good. Uh, mostly <laughs> it came out good, you no know. Rob, damn it! <laughs> <laughs> it came out for the better. So, um, congrats to the congrats to everybody so far. Um, I think we got two left. Three. We got three left. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Uh, next one. Favorite indie cover. And this was actually a very stacked field because you guys kill it on covers. And I know a lot of covers nowadays are very good pinups, but a lot of them are actually well designed, look amazing. And uh, I think this top three that we have are, are a good example of that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and again, I'm going to say next year, though. Ace play number seven, that Sean Hill variant cover is going to be my vote. And if it does not win, y'all dumb. <laughs> <laughs> I, I agree with you. I'm a, I might be, I might be the, I might be like Kyron is this way for this year for Nikki if it doesn't win. But, you know, um, I, I love the, 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 um, the nominees that we got for this year. So, um, you know, let's do it. All right. Indie cover. The Dragon in the Closet, Book One. Luna Number One. Redemption Hash Four, Ken Hunt Variant. And the winner is 
Redemption Hash 4, Ken Hunt variant. Shout out to the Redemption fans, man. They really came out of this year. Um, that, Ken Hunt, that, 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 Vin, that Ken Hunt variant is amazing. Um, all three of those, all three of those covers were amazing. We had a lot. I think we we had a lot of. Um, <laughs> pretty, pretty, but this is the worst. <laughs> uh, we had a lot of uh, of different submissions for for that one. I want to say um, there was a lot of diversity in the favorite cover um, category this year for sure. Um, so shout out to to all the cover artists. Like I said, Worthy Chaos fans definitely came out this year. Yes, and, uh, and supported y'all. Better. Y'all almost as big as uh, Ace Blade fans. I mean, y'all really I, out there. Hey. Um, we're gonna see next year because I'm definitely submitting some Ace Blade. I'm definitely putting some Ace Blade stuff out there for next year. But um, you know, um, shout out to everybody. And um, you know, that's that's definitely I love that Luna cover, that concrete cover, that concrete yeah. comic uh, Luna number one. Definitely. Um, Don't worry, but, we're, gonna, we're gonna see concrete comics really quick. Uh, <laughs> definitely, go see, definitely go see them very soon. So uh, you want to go over to the favorite publisher? We got the favorite publisher and the, and. There was a lot of publishers I, that, looking over the entries, I had never heard of before. But looking into them, I'll be buying some of your books real soon. Some real good ones. Um, but this actually came down to our closest vote. Yeah, yeah. This, is, this is very close. Um, publishers, I want to say, publishers can sometimes get a bad rap, especially in indie comics, because there's, there's a lot of publishers who, you know, who... Just don't, don't, don't 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 sugarcoat it. <laughs> There's a lot of publishers. No, a lot of y'all have egos. <laughs> who are who number? Yes, have egos, but also don't. I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> they're, they're not delivering on on their products, and it's you know it's hard for indie publishers um, because of that. But there are a lot of good ones out there too, um, and um, you know we're that's why we're here. We're here to like, highlight the good ones and um, definitely shine a light. So, favorite publisher of 2023. Um, Beam Awards. Great indie publisher. Freestyle Comics. Concrete Comics. Worthy Chaos Comics. And the winner is Freestyle Concrete Comics. That's right, it's we a had tie. a tie. It's, it's a, a tie. tie. Yo, literally, literally a tie. Kyron called me up and was like, "Hey, uh, what are we gonna do about this? What are, we got two? We, we got two um, number ones who you know who who got the same amount of votes. We're well like, deserving con- uh, publisher, by the way." Uh, we're like, um, should we flip a coin? Should we, you know, should we make them fight to the death? What should we do? I um, voted for fight to the death, but Danny said we can't do that on uh, StreamYard or uh, Restream. So. No, the logistics would have just been terrible. We had to fly people out, you know, who would have yeah. But, well, but um, Gonzo and, and Michael, they're not that far. Philadelphia to Ohio. Yeah, I mean, that's, true. that's true. We could we could have arranged it. Maybe next year. Next um, year. Right. Shout out to uh, Concrete Comics. And Freestyle Comics have been putting out some amazing books yep. um, this year. Freestyle uh, and Concrete. Let's see. Concrete has Acolyte, has Absorber, Odina, Luna, um, Starman. Or Star, yeah. is it Starboy? Starboy. Oh. Star no, no, Starboy is Marvel. It's like Astro. Ac- yeah. Um, they, got a bunch of, they got a bunch of great titles, man. And it's, and it's great. Freestyle has uh, Hot Shot, uh, Dangon. Uh, they got Vigilance, <laughs> Vigilance <laughs> Zero Top Event, uh, Zero Five Zero. Star, uh, uh, Spider Squirrel. Yep, Spider Squirrel is in there. Um, they actually got, uh, um, uh, you know, some Ace Blade and Lumberjacks cameos and books. Emerald Quest. I, did, I forgot to mention that. My Lumberjacks in the books. Uh, yeah, yeah, your Lumberjacks yeah. in there. Um, so congratulations to to both publishers. Um, like I said, it was a tie and definitely worthy, definitely yeah. worthy um, for the nominees. Thank y'all so much. And, um, you know, we got one more to go. We got Last one more to go. Now, this is this is our favorite indie anthology. And there are some good anthologies this year. And what this shows is that when we come together as a group, we produce amazing things. 
Absolutely. When we put everything aside and we just produce some things, there's some good stuff that comes out from us. And the next year, though, we're Danny and I are going to be in one of these anthologies. So hey. just look out for that. If you can get your letter to do his job. Seriously. It's been like <laughs> four weeks now. I've been telling you. No, it's been months now. No, we're talking about months. I'm going to get it done this week. We're going to make it happen. <laughs> yeah, you said that. Uh, you know what? Whatever. Let's <laughs> let's just see who is the best anthology this year. <laughs> Indie anthology. G Man Comics three in one number three. Hospice. Memoirs of the Morbid. And the winner is Hospice. Shout out for the whole Hospice team, man. I'll tell you, the marketing for Hospice was great earlier this year. Testing. Um, yeah, I, it was a, a bunch of different um, creators who were all running Kickstarters, you know, for different different parts of the same anthology, and it was great just to just to see like the cryptic cryptic announcements. Yeah. Um, and um, you know, and we see that it worked. We see that it worked. We got the got the the number one spot for our favorite indie anthology this year. Yeah, and then, you know what? I have to give big shout out to Travis Gibb. He's yeah. usually the the man behind these anthologies like that. Um, but you guys produce a great book with Hospice, and I'm excited to see what you do followed up with that. Um, and you know, one thing I noticed is that a lot of these hot, these uh, anthologies are now horror based anthologies. Mm -hmm. We're seeing yeah. a lot more of that. So, who knows what next year is going to bring? If it's still going to be that same trend, yeah. I won't say. Um, I don't know. I don't think "Don't Push the Red Button" is is technically published yet. Yeah. Almost technically oh. kind of horror, also. Also. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I've actually absolutely been seeing that, and, and mostly, uh, you know, the uh, Cthulhu's, the Cthulhu's out there. Cthulhu's out there. That's Travis again. Yep. Travis. Actually, push the red button is Travis also. Is it? Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, it is. That's he's right. Part of that also. So I mean, yeah. I mean, you want an anthology? Talk to Travis. He's got he's got the hookup on that. Absolutely. Holla if you're here. So that, that has been the 2023 BEMO Awards. Thank y'all so much for hanging out with us. Um, we got we had a good time putting this together. It was a, it was a lot of hard work, but um, you know we want to definitely highlight. That's what the what our what the Four Tales podcast is about: finding your favorite new indie creator. And um, we hopefully hopefully we've we've highlighted somebody that you didn't know about, something that you're you're intrigued about hearing, and you go out and check their books out, check out their content. Um, can, can I play the, my beam? Can I play my beam video? I didn't actually get to play it in the beginning. I forgot to. Light the beam. <laughs> Why? Why? Wait, it didn't get Light the beam. Ah. Uh. I should have never. Because that was the whole inspiration of the word beam. It was award. not. It was what? not. <laughs> What's the whole inspiration? Just you randomly going, like the beam. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I should have never done that on live, oh, on live video. All right. Crazy. Well, it's been fun. Um, and again, we thank everybody that voted um, and nominated. I, I think we're going to change things up next year. I think we're going to be more hands-on on the nomination part of things. I think Dan and I ever talked about that. Uh, but we want to make sure that this is still your guys' award system. So we'll we'll figure out something because we honestly put this together like a week, two weeks. <laughs> yeah. We literally say, hey, you want to do a, an award show? Yeah, let's do yeah. it. Next week, <laughs> hey, this is our award show. <laughs> So we're going to make sure that's how the best plans are made, though. That's how that's just how I work, to be honest with you. So, yeah, so we're going to we're going to plan this out a little bit better next year and uh, it'll be more cohesive. And I think it will be I think it will be better. Honestly, I think it'll be better. Yeah. Um, but this has been fun, man. Uh, it has, man. It's been a good year. It's been a good year all together, man. Um, the third season of the um, Four Tales podcast. This is it's been crazy, man. Nine, nine episodes. Um, we had. We had some ups and we had some downs. We had we had a lot of great guests, a lot of great guests. And, um, you know, we're already getting requests for next year. So, you know, I'm excited, man. I'm excited to do season four and, um, you know, see where this thing goes, man. Yeah. 
So um, we're going to end it now. Uh, but where can people find your 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 books? I don't trust you. What? <laughs> I don't trust you. <laughs> I don't trust you. Three seasons. Uh, okay. Light the beam! <laughs> okay. I, I, had to, right, I, knew right. coming. I knew something was coming. Right. <laughs> okay. Okay. You can find me at fourth the fourth. Quick takes. We can't it. do an episode without quick takes. Come on. I knew it. I'm gonna get you know what, season four, I'm gonna get some control over this show. <laughs> I'm gonna get I'm gonna get the the ability to do some things <laughs> to do some things on this show for next season. That's my that's gonna be my one contract, my one contract edit. The control backroom control of the quick takes. Let's go. All right, quick All take. Right. Do you want to tell everybody what quick takes are? The quick takes is a rapid fire Q and A section where we grill our guest. We don't have a guest, but I guess it's gonna be me. Uh, for what well, we have five questions and we have 45 seconds to answer them off the top of our head. Let's go. Quick takes by Kyron Quick, sponsored by Four, Four Tales, uh, Four Tales Podcast, um, uh, Fourth Wall Productions, and Taurus Comics. All right, Danny Quick, we just went through a whole show showcasing amazing indie comic creators that we called the Beam Awards. Yep, so I yep. want to know. What does the Beam Award mean to you? The Beam Award, man, it means the best. It means the best, okay? It means that the best and brightest have been putting their talents out there. And it's just amazing um, to be able to highlight creators and, um, and, to, and to highlight the people who are actually putting out, putting out books, man. Like a lot of people, um, like I said, out there are just – you know, saying, having a lot of great concepts, putting ideas out there and, um, you know, getting people's money and then not delivering. But these Beam Awards are for people who have delivered books, who have put out books and, and had the content. And, um, you know, it means a lot to me. And um, I'm glad that we're able to highlight other creators this year. Nice. I like it. All right. Question two. One of our winners was uh, Freestyle Comics. Publisher yep. of Hot Shot and Vigilance, things like that. Um, and recently, you and Michael Watson did an image, or you showcased an image where you had Ace Blade and Hot Shot flying through the air mm-hmm. without Lumberjacks, without Saw the Lightning Wielder, or Shark or anything. Um, but I want to know, who would win in a fight, Ace Blade or Hot Shot? Um, and Michael Watson, if you're still in the chat, you can put your answer in there, too. That's a tough one because I actually know how to get my how to get hot shot riled up. Mm. Um, but to mm. get there, um, you know, he has to sustain a lot of damage. And Ace Blade is not the give a lot of damage type. <laughs> <laughs> so, um I don't it would be tough for Ace Blade to win in a fight against Hot Shot. But he would be able to call in vigilance for for some help, and I think that that would, I think that that Wait, would. Who's calling him. in vigilance? Ace, Ace Blade is, is calling in vigilance. Whoa! To help in order to win, but if it's just them two, this guy be hot shot. Hot shot. Hot shot is definitely going to win that fight. All right, I like it. All right. <laughs> he said, "Crispy fried Ace Blade." Hey. <laughs> That's tough. <laughs> All right. Question number three. Um, you and Morgan are fourth wall productions. You guys are producing, my understanding is Lumberjacks um, and Ace Blade and other books. But you guys also do a lot of things on social media where you you show these skits of you as a comic creator talking to random thug dude, Morgan. And I want to know, why does Morgan play such a good bully in your skits? Um, that's not an act. <laughs> that is not an act. He, he does it well because he, in a former life, before he, you know, found religion, you know, he was out there in the streets. Morgan was out there. He was definitely out there in the streets. And um, he just has to call on his past experiences to mm. uh, inform his characters. You know, um, okay. Morgan is a, Morgan is definitely a character actor, but the character is himself that he's acting. So 
Um, you know, we do care about the craft of, of acting and, and putting out these comedy skits. But there's a lot of truth in comedy. The best the best comedy is rooted in truth. And Morgan is absolutely uh, that that genuine character on the inside. Some part of his brain is still there. So okay. all right, that's just it. OK. All right. All right. Good. Good answer. Good answer. <laughs> all right. Question four. This is the end of season three. Yeah. We've had some highs. Super highs and some lows. Yeah, but I want to yeah. know what was your favorite moment of season three? Season three favorite moments, man. That's a tough one. We've had some great moments on here. I want to say, um, I want to say that that this was this year when you did, you did a cowboy ace blade, um, at one point. Was that this year? I think that was during so. Battle of the Black. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that cowboy ace blade was amazing. Um, it was definitely a highlight of the year. But we've had a lot of a lot of great moments, man. Um, so, you know, I'm just looking forward to it. But we did get to talk to Daryl Banks for an hour. There put, it is. That's what I was waiting on. I'm gonna put Daryl Banks at the top of the at the high at the highlight of season three. <laughs> That's what I was waiting on. <laughs> Even better than Cowboy Ace Blade is is talking to Daryl Banks for an hour. So I'm going go Oh that. man. <laughs> All right, that, I was I knew that was going to be the answer. But I just wanted to, I want to hear it from you. Okay. Terrible. Question five, as you know, question five is always the top five. Um, okay. You started doing this earlier, but I want to know what is your top five favorite Thanksgiving dishes? Ooh, okay. This is tough because, um, like I said, cabbage is going to be on the list. Um, macaroni and cheese is going to be on the list. I'm putting macaroni and cheese at two. Cabbage at five. Four is going to be um, cornbread. Mm. Three, my wife makes a, uh, a bean, a pinto bean casserole with brown sugar in, in, in um, bacon. That's going to be at three. Like I said, number two is going to be macaroni and cheese. And then my number one, my wife makes every year, she makes a peach, uh, peach cobbler that has a uh, pineapple. It's a pineapple peach cobbler. With uh, little Debbie, not little Debbie. It's a cake. It's a cake cobbler that she makes, and it is delicious. And it's my <clears> favorite <throat> every Thanksgiving. She doesn't make it often, but she always makes it on Thanksgiving. So that's my number one for sure. Tiana, make me a plate next year. I'm coming over. <laughs> it's worth it. <laughs> It'll be worth the flight, brother. I'm telling you. All right, uh, Lonzo. So wait, Lonzo, where were you when we announced favorite publisher? Bro, he dipped out and came back. He dipped out and came back. Shout out to Concrete. That's Shout out to all the winners. Concrete, yeah. uh, Freestyle, Veronica. Uh, Shout out to all the nominees too. I might, we might do. I don't, I don't, I, don't, I ain't gonna say that we'll do uh, certificates for the nominees, but we might do a graphic for for nominations. So everybody that was nominated, everybody that won, definitely uh, shout out to y'all. Getting the kids together. All right. Just just a, you can scroll back a little bit if you want, Alonzo, but just FYI. Concrete Comics and Freestyle Comics were a tie as favorite publisher of the year. Favorite publisher of the year. You definitely won. Congratulations, my guy. Um, but we definitely gonna teach you how to play spades before that's a goal for 2024. Yeah. Teach you how to play spades. Um all right, man. This has been a great season. It's been a great season. Absolutely. Um I know I'll talk to you, but I hope you have an amazing Christmas. You too, sir. Um, and I hope you have a wonderful new year. We will see everybody the beginning of 2000. Well, not the beginning, but middle of 2024 is when season four starts. And episode 100, we're going to have something epic. I I'm planning on something. But we're going to have something epic. You're gonna, are you going to tell me about it or we just? Hell no. <laughs> you don't tell me nothing. Why should I tell you? <laughs> I'm just saying it, it's gonna be epic. <laughs> epic. All right, bet. I'm All down with epic. epic. I'm down with epic. Um, sure. But Danny, where can uh people check out your your work, your stuff? Football.com. Light the beam. <laughs> I tried to I tried to get it in there before you hit the button. I knew it was coming. I saw you looking for it. I saw you looking for the button. And the Ace Blade on all social media platforms. Kyron, where can people find you, sir? 
Uh, you can find me at Taurus Comics. And like the beam! I- <laughs> uh, we are at 493 subscriptions. We need seven more. Are we- I'm assuming we're talking about the Age of the Geekdom YouTube. YouTube, YouTube channel. Yeah. So yeah, if you're listening, go to YouTube, search out Age of Geekdom, not Age of Shield, because that's what pops up, but Age of Geekdom. <laughs> Age of Geekdom. Let's subscribe. You can watch all our shows. I think we're at back up to seven days a week with What the Fig. I believe so. So uh but yeah, go subscribe. Uh, you can find me at Tauruscomics.com. Check out my work there. Uh, you can also find me at Taurus Comics on Twitter, Facebook. Need a like the beam emoji. I mean, you could talk to Tess about making this emojis need, for us. We need that. We need that. Um, now, if this is your first time checking out the Four Tales podcast, you can go to our website, fourtalespodcast.com. You can listen to our previous 98 episodes. Uh, you can support us financially, buying some gear, whatever you want to do. But, uh, you know, have some fun with it. But until next time, sayonara, goodbye. Everyone, light your beams. And uh, have a great day. I want to know what it is quick is trying to say.